Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good. So it's time for the part five breakdown of the whole Takashi 6 9 situation. So if you guys don't know, yesterday got really crazy. I did not want to do a video until I kind of saw how everything played out. So basically, 50 Cent caused an uproar all over social media when he accused Jim Jones of being a federal informant. So what happened is that basically new paperwork came out yesterday via TMZ. I mean, the way they're getting paperwork and, and posting it and leaking it, honey, it's a damn shame. So in this paperwork, they're basically showing the breakdown conversation um, between Mel Murder, a.k.a. Jamel Jones, and another individual. So when this first came out, when people were hearing about Takashi being set up to be killed or super violated... People initially thought that the conversation was with Shoddy and somebody else. Then we were all shocked last week when the um, audio came out and the persons on the phone who were conversating on this wiretap was none other than Mel Murder, a.k.a. Jamel Jones, and Jim Jones, the rapper, okay? So if you go and you read this paperwork, you'll see the conversation that we listened to in part four. So at the beginning of the conversation, Jones, who is Mel Murder, he's having a conversation with Jordan, and that's Shadi's last name. So the conversation says, Hernandez is trying to dry snitch at the same time, homie, but he keeps saying, fuck Treyway, fuck that nigga, fuck Treyway, ain't no nigga, Treyway, fuck Treyway. Then the next thing they're saying, Jordan laughing, I'ma feed him though. Jones says, what you doing? Damn, I don't even want to talk on the phone, homie. We got to meet up and talk. Well, at least you know I'm saying. Somebody was smart in that conversation and decided to meet off of the damn phone. I'm telling you your whole life, don't talk on the fucking phone, right? So then later on is when he gets on the phone with um, Jim Jones. And so he's saying here, that is what Hernandez is trying to do. What he's trying to do, he's trying a little, he's trying to separate himself. Then it says individual one, that's cool, now he got to get violated. So when this transcript first initially hit the net, like I said, people thought it was a conversation between Mel Martyr and Shadi, only to find out the individual one was Jim Jones. So what they're trying to say is that supposedly Jim Jones is listed as a federal informant, um, in new paperwork and everything else. So when that article was posted onto social media, 50 Cent, his messy ass, <laughs> he decided to take to um, Instagram and he basically wrote this. So this is a piece of the article from what 50 Cent posted and it says, rapper Jim Jones is listed as a federal informant in court documents in the case against Takashi. In the original court transcripts that were previously released online, the conversation between individual one, Jim Jones, is listed as cooperating with federal agents in a conversation with Jamel Mel Murder Jones which would explain why Jim Jones was able to have such a lengthy criminal record and avoid prison time in the past. If you recall earlier this year, Jim Jones dodged jail time in a drug and gun case. And that was very true. Jim Jones was pulled over, I believe, down in Atlanta. He had all types of drugs and guns on him. And that case did mysteriously disappear. So 50 Cent ended up reposting that article. And he says, huh, oh shit. So that's why they not pulling him in? Say it ain't so, Jimmy. And then, of course, he goes to hashtag his liquor brand, okay? So, of course, that went viral. People went crazy about, like, Jim Jones is a snitch. He's an informant. You know, now it all makes sense. The rabbit hole definitely goes deep. And my thing is this. I would not be surprised if Jim Jones is somehow involved because, again, he did have all types of, you know, court cases pending, and he was able to basically skate away. We're learning new details tonight about the arrest of rapper Jim Jones in Coweta County this week. Deputies say Jones was a passenger in a car that led police on a brief chase Wednesday night and when deputies stopped the car they say they found drugs inside fox 5's doug evans has a story from coweta county where he spoke with the deputy who made that stop it was late wednesday night just before midnight when a coweta county deputy says he saw a mercedes suv swerving on the highway on interstate 85 he says the car was driven by 23-year-old Anna Miles. In the back seat was rapper Jim Jones, who's 41 years old and his real name is Joseph Jones. 
The deputy says when he pulled behind the car on the interstate, quote, he noticed the smell of marijuana. He told me by telephone it was so strong he smelled it before he even noticed the car weaving down the road. And when he pulled alongside it, he says front seat passenger Darnell Wright turned on the interior dome light. And the deputy says he couldn't see anyone inside because, quote, the entire vehicle appeared to be filled with smoke. The deputy says when the car went from the far left lane to get off the highway at exit 35 at Grantville without signaling, he turned on his blue lights and tried to pull it over. But the car, he says, ran a stop sign and refused to stop. And in trying to pull in front of the SUV, he says Miles accelerated intentionally striking my vehicle. He says all four inside were eventually taken into custody. Rapper Jim Jones, Darnell Wright, Jamal Smith, and Anna Miles. Deputies say all four are being charged with drug possession. The men are being charged with possession of a firearm and the commission of a crime. Deputies say they found a stolen handgun in the back seat where they say Jones and Jamal Smith were sitting. The driver, Anna Miles, she faces a charge of fleeing from police and aggravated assault. Three of the four are still in jail right now. Rapper Jim Jones is the only one who's bonded out. Live in Coweta County, Doug Evans, Fox 5 News. Doug, thanks. Another thing that made no sense also is we posted yesterday on Instagram about his home going up into foreclosure. If you guys do not know, Jim Jones, the guy who once rapped ballin'. We fly low. No lie, and you know this squatting. <laughs> yes, the shade is real, bitch. Y'all know damn well nobody in America will get away with squatting for 10 damn years. How the hell are you out here not paying your rent, your mortgage, your taxes for 10 years straight? That sounds like some snitch shit to me. Sounds like somebody cut Jim Jones a really good damn deal, okay? Basically, what's being reported is that him and his long-suffering fiance Chrissy, you know, the one that, he, that she proposed to him all those many moons ago, and they still ain't gotten married? Yes, those two. Basically, they have been living in this New Jersey mansion for the the past 10 years the last payment they made on that mansion was in 2010 how they could get away with this to me makes no sense it clearly shows that there are two different sets of rules because if this was regular smuggler people you'd be out that damn house and all your furniture and all your belongings would be on the damn lawn within 90 days okay within 90 days they will be starting the foreclosure proceedings so how they were able to get away with this for 10 years to me makes no sense what so damn ever they haven't made a mortgage payment they haven't paid taxes they ain't done shit in 10 years the last payment they made was in 2010 meanwhile these people have been on reality television stunting front end you know buying hundred thousand dollar rings and shoes and purses and everything else but they have not been paying their mortgage and the new jersey mansion was recently foreclosed and it was auctioned off for a hundred dollars so i just found that really interesting as well because what regular citizen could literally live in a mansion where the mortgage payment is four grand a month and just not pay for 10 years usually when you have a home even a damn apartment if your payment is 30 days late they start the paperwork if you own a home and you decide that you don't want to pay or you can't pay or you know you falling on hard times you will be out that home within 90 days point blank period the, the bank is coming y'all got 90 days to pack up and you know leave if you can't pack up your shit will be on the front lawn you know so i found that really really strange that him and chrissy were able to squat for 10 years without making nan payment and they only started the procedure to get them out the house this year meanwhile this case with six nine is going on and we all know chrissy and jim haven't been on love and hip-hop new york in years they're also going to be featured on love and hip-hop um this season as well so i I don't know this whole situation concerning jim jones definitely makes me give everything the side eye but i do feel like 50 cent was definitely being messy and after that he did delete that whole post delete all that shit delete all that shit Best play with you, piggy. but um i think he wanted to cause a conversation and a stir so i was trying to see what jim jones would say about the situation if he had any type of rebuttal and the only thing that Jim Jones did on social media with all of this being said about him, him being a possible informant, him losing his home, he chose to just basically post videos of himself working out. He says, in case you didn't, we got busy 
at another hotel. Stay focused. Don't let them sidetrack you from your mission. Hashtag vamp fit. So that's what he's focusing on is basically working out, okay? And he's trying to ignore all the fool la la surrounding his ass, okay? So now moving on from the whole Jim Jones controversy, it is now being confirmed that there was another snitch in the camp. I do at this point believe that there are several snitches in this whole Takashi 6 9 because like they say, there's no loyalty in the whole criminal activity. Once people get popped and they're trying to save themselves, the, the toughest dudes will tell what the hell they know. They'll turn on their mama if you give them chance okay for freedom so now it's come out that takashi 69's undocumented driver had been cooperating with the feds to avoid deportation so this entire situation has just gotten crazier and crazier so this is what's being reported they're stating that the government had a key cooperating witness in the investigation of the nine trade bloods before 69 flipped the Brooklyn rapper's driver, the driver Jorge Rivera, testified Monday that he began helping the feds in May 2018 after he was thrown in immigration jail because he's an undocumented immigrant. He was released in July of that year and returned to his job of driving the rowdy rapper. Later that month, Rivera was behind the wheel with Takashi in the back seat of the Chevy Tahoe when they were rear-ended. The security cameras in the ride captured the dramatic moment when two men identified by Takashi as Anthony Harv Ellison and Shaw kidnapped the gummo artist at gunpoint. I thought we were going to get killed and we would be robbed, Rivera said on the stand in Manhattan Federal Court through a Spanish interpreter. Rivera followed the kidnappers as they sped away with Takashi in the back seat. He abandoned the chase when one of the men got out of the Hyundai Nissan and began running towards the Tahoe with the gun drawn, Rivera said. I felt he was going to shoot me. I put my car in reverse. Rivera testified that the trial of the alleged kidnapper, Ellison and all Jeremiah Nuke Mack, who's accused of dealing hair on for nine Trey. Last week, Takashi testified against the men under his own cooperation deal with the government, which he began in November. Days after the alleged kidnapping, Rivera secretly recorded Takashi and his manager, Kafino Shorty Jordan, discussing the incident and gave the audio to investigators. As preparations were being made to move Takashi from Bed-Stuyvesant to Long Island amid internal gang strife, Rivera testified that he noticed an AR-15 Jordan had given to Takashi 69 for protection, as well as a blue backpack Jordan stole from a rival at gunpoint in Times Square earlier that summer. Rivera notified investigators about both pieces of evidence. Jordan has since been arrested and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Rivera said he pled guilty to the charges of racketeering, weapons possession, and robbery in connection with his cooperation agreement. I know I had to pay for my mistakes, he said, adding that he hoped his cooperation would result in him not being deported. So here we go. We have another snitch in the camp on top of 6 9 So it looks like a lot of people, you know, were trying to say themselves, were telling, you know, like I've said before, I do believe that this gang has been under investigation for a long time. And basically 6 9 was the final key to basically locking away all of these guys. He was that final piece. They were able to get 6 9 in there because, again, there were no checks and balances. Nobody co-signed him. These grown men were so worried about being famous and going viral that, you know, they allowed 6 9 in, which then in turn allowed 6 9s driver, which then in turn basically helped solidify the case that the police had been building against 9 Trey. So this entire situation situation is insane all of this tea that's coming out so this was part five i hope you guys enjoyed this um there will definitely be a part six so make sure you guys stay tuned let's go ahead and get the discussion popping and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button don't forget to share and most importantly hit that notification bell so that we can be a part of the notification squad as soon as i drop my part six so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces <laughs> <laughs>